right, I think that probably is hot enough for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it over, put it in the V of a tree, and bend it out. All right, I've they, got that stick warm. What I'm going to do is I can put that right where I want it to bend. You can see right there is where I need that bend. So I'm going to bend that and I'm going to just hold that for a few minutes until it cools off a bit. You can see that soot, that stuff will just rub off. That's just soot on there. I'm going to bend this nice, try and get it to where it straightens out a little bit. We'll probably have to do this a couple times. And there's a good chance that we will end up having to do this later on with the spear down the road as it... Uh, you can see that's already getting nice. It's getting a lot straighter. So I'm just going to hold that here for a minute until it cools off and then we'll go back to the fire and do it again. Alright, what I'm doing now is I'm moved down on the stick a little bit. That took this notch out real pretty good. It was a big bend right there and we got that out pretty well but we still got a slight bow in here. So I'm getting the stick a little more heated up a little further down it. And we're going to have to do this three or four times until we get the stick pretty straight. So let me work on this for a little while. Well we're getting this thing pretty good. We've taken about three quarters to even a little more than that out of the bend so far. This is the last little bend I think we have and we're going to be pretty good, at least straight enough for a spear that we can use. So we're going to finish this one up here, run it over to the tree and bend it out and see how it looks. We'll get to look down that shaft. If you can see, you can see a little bend right in here. That's the bend we're working to take out right now. So we're heating that up. There was some big bends up in here that we've already taken out. You can see there's still a little bit, but it's straight enough for a spear. So we're going to go ahead and heat this up, take that bend out, and see if we can have a decent looking spear here. You see this is right where that bend was, and I'm actually bending over the other way a little bit. And that will help pull that out of there. We've got to wait here about two or three minutes for it to cool off. And we might be in pretty good shape after this. What I'm doing here is just testing to see if we've got that kink out. I think we do. It's looking pretty good. You can see that's much straighter than what we had it before. If you look right down there you can see that we've taken a huge bend out right here. That's looking pretty good. I think this is going to suffice for what we need. So the next step that we're going to do is to come up to this end. We're going to shave this a little bit more and point it off and then uh, we'll go ahead and sharpen it up to a point and fire harden it. We're working this tip. We've started to sand it and we're burning it basically like you would char, char burn a bowl out. What we're doing is burning the outside of this wood then sanding the char off real carefully. Now that won't hurt anything because what we're doing is driving that moisture out of the wood and that's going to make that a nice hard point and it's going to be nice and sharp when we're finished. You can see it's starting to get there. Well, we don't want to burn the tip. Don't want to do that. I'm going to keep that tip from burning right now. We're trying to burn off the sides a little bit. And we'll go back over and we'll sand it some more. I've got a piece of sandstone up here and it's got a little V in it. I don't know if you can see that V right there. And that V is actually helping shape this into a point. It's nice to find that. Before that, what I was doing was just sanding on this piece of sandstone with some other sand. And we're going to do that as well. It takes a little bit to do this. And we're talking primitive weapons here, folks. Well, our kanai is just about finished. Now, the kanai actually originated in Tasmania, and uh, the people, or that's where we have record of it from, the people of Tasmania would actually use something called the tea tree around the states 
things like maple and pear, or I'm sorry, plum, uh, trees like that that are straight, that have good straight grain, work real well. So our maple canai is just about finished. So I want you to get a picture of that tip there. We really worked hard on this tip, and uh, it's a pretty nice tip for a self-tip. Now you can make this sharper. You could you could put an arrowhead on here. That would be fine. Again, this is primitive. This is without any tools. So uh, you can see that that's a pretty nice job. That is very very fire hardened. We've scraped all the excess off. I want you to look down the end of that again. Let me show you here. As you can see, that's pretty straight compared to what we first had. Not bad at all. So that fire really helped us out. You can see why it's so important to have a fire. The last thing that we're going to do with this canai, because it is a throwing stick, is we're going to find the balance point. And our balance point on this is right on this set of knots. What I'm going to do is one hand behind that balance point is where I'm going to hold that. And I'm going to put some cattail cordage up here. Just tie that into a clove hitch. And that'll hold on there just fine for us. And then I'm going to tie a little finger loop in there. This finger loop will become apparent in a moment. That finger loop is so that we can get a little extra power on this as we throw it. What we'll do actually is hold it. This is our balance point, remember? Here's our finger loop. And I'm going to hold this here and then throw it as I would a javelin. This thumb point actually gives me a little bit of extra leverage on that. This is a mix between a spear and an atlatl. So let me go ahead and throw this a couple times and uh, we'll throw it from about 10 yards here down to the hay bales and see how we do. And you can see that did a good job. Let's go up and look at the penetration. <clears throat> Alright, that penetrated that hay bale 8 inches. Not bad. Let's see if we do it again. Stay right there on the hay bale. And again, we're at about 8 inches there. Not bad. Well, this is David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. We hope that you've enjoyed this edition of Almost Naked into the Bush. And uh, again, get out and practice these skills. It does no good for us to teach you if you don't get out and put them into action. This is a little more difficult. You know, if we had a knife, if we had some cordage, we can make this thing a whole lot better. We can make a sharper point on the end. It will be a lot quicker. This took us about four hours start to finish because of the fire hardening and because of the point. We really had to work that point for quite a while with the stone tools and with the This sand. is David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. We want to let you know that we appreciate your support. And if you like what you're seeing on the channel, please tell your friends. That way we can get the word out and these skills to more people. Uh, we appreciate all the comments that you've been leaving us and uh, we're going to get around to doing as many of the videos as we can. We've had many, many, many requests. We've probably got 15 or 20 videos right now that are on the on the table. So we're going to get to them. I promise you it's just going to take us a little bit of time. Until we see you again, have a great day.